Smart's got three assists tonight. Well, well, he knew how many inches he had over the guy. I mean, let's face it, good decision to just rise up and take the jump shot. With the stretch four and the need for shooting at the position, they don't need to be a three-point threat, but they do need to be able to hit a mid-range jump shot. Yeah, well said. I think you need to have guys that can make perimeter shots to create spacing. The game's evolving to a space-out-the-floor type game, and shot-making gives you a chance to do that. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, I mean, a cold stretch offensively. They desperately need a basket. Holmes passes to Wood. Shot clock at six. And Willie Cauley-Stein gets the whistle that time. That's foul number two for him. That's Nick Stauskas is checked in for Philadelphia. Checking in for the 76ers, Nick Stauskas. McDermott with a steal. And up the court come the Kings on the break. Oh, and the jam by Granger. And a really a nice one-two punch there, guys. Great defensive play and great basket in transition. Aggressive play, attacking basketball, on the attack, full throttle. I love it. Philadelphia with the ball. The Kings getting the button. Cauley Stein grabs the board. Now here's McDermott. Defense is right there. The fadeaway. The second chance effort, and he sinks the layup. And defensively, guys, they've been unable to shut down the middle. Yeah, and they're really getting pummeled on points in the paint here. Just under two and a half minutes gone here in the final quarter. Here's Holmes. Sacramento grabs the miss. Carly Stein with the screen for McDermott. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. And, and guys, what a strange rookie campaign for, for Dougie McBuckets. I mean, he entered the draft as a polished, sharpshooter. The Bulls traded up in the first round to get him. And he ended up playing nine minutes a game over the course of last season. And on the topic of Doug McDermott, one of the most decorated college players in recent history, and Clark, you called a lot of his games. Yeah, enjoyed watching him play, and I still think he has a bright future. Just never found any real rhythm. Uh, averaged only three points a game, but he didn't get much playing time, so look for him to bounce back in the years going forward. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. You know, one thing we That's saw a lot of last season ball. during the playoffs was the hack a shack plan. Pretty much purposely fouling a poor free throw shooter. A lot of differing opinions on it as it wasn't fun to watch for the viewers, but many feel it's a legitimate part of the game if it works. The hack a shack or the hack a Jordan or the hack a whatever being a focus of the playoffs last season, we saw it up close and personal. It opened up a debate, Greg, on whether or not it should be allowed. What do you think? You know, it's a touchy subject. I remember last summer, the, the, the spring, I should say, the commissioner touched upon it. You know, one of the concerns is do you want to change a rule for an entire league when it basically affects two players? And, and so it's something that you got to be sensitive to. Uh, but to your point, the. Fans don't want to see that ugly style of basketball. It, it's boring, it slows the game down. It's hauled in by Wood. And he rushed that one, no doubt about it. The D out of position, you could see the frustration on his face. Here's Stauskas. Another miss by Philadelphia. The Kings have gone four of eight in this fourth quarter, shooting at even 50% from the field. Here's McDermott. No luck. And it's Philadelphia the other way. There's the pass to Stauskas. Steps back and fires. A tad short, but it's good off the front iron. Well, they gave him some room, and he just stepped back and nailed the wide open jumper. Smart dishes to Cauley Stein. And Willie Cauley Stein gets the whistle that time. And that'll be his third foul so far. Yeah, first turnover of the game. Overall, though, he's been rock solid. And for the 76ers, their shooting has been wayward so far. Only 37% from the floor. 
feeds it to Thompson. From downtown, Cauley Stein grabs the board. Cauley Stein's got 12 rebounds here tonight. Big time effort. Got that one up Danny quick. Ranger. 16 Danny points Ranger. for Danny Granger. He has created some terrific opportunities for himself and really made the most of them. Pass to Wood. Beasley with the steal. A finish. And it's Granger with the jam. And that's how you make a steal count. Turn it into a quick slam at the other end. It was really a case. It looked like Greg Anthony right there, if I, <laughs> if I can say so. It was really a case of a great defensive play triggering some instant offense. Yeah, I remember GA as an irritant. And this guy, much like Greg, creating havoc out there. The Kings have gone 6 of 12 from the field here in the fourth and even 50%. Carly Stein with the screen for Smart. Kicks it to Granger, out to the right wing. Now here's McDermott. He's tightly guarded, can't hit from in close. He's always going to have a difficult time finishing when the defense is in his face like that. Here's the screen. The screen from Thompson. The 76ers again can't hit it. And it's Sacramento's ball. They're on a 14-3 run right now. Granger. Beasley outside. Good, and Smart gets the assist. Smart's got five assists in the game. Another pass put right into the shooter's pocket, right in the shooting pocket, for a terrific assist. They've done a lot of that today. And it's something we haven't seen much of at the opposite end of the floor. Now here's Thompson. Pass to Wood. Four on the shot clock. The 76ers need to get off a shot, and Granger with the block. And the shot clock expires. 24-second violation. And Philadelphia making a change here. Noel's checked in. Kings have gone through the fourth quarter shooting 50%. 7 of 14. And that one's good. And 11 points for D'Angelo Russell. What a big-time mismatch it's been in the post. Where's the defensive adjustment? They're getting housed down there. Yeah, something's got to change. A double team, maybe a substitution, but this is getting out of hand. To the inside. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. That one on MB. Well, we all know how loud NBA arenas can get. I mean, last season there were some accusations thrown around that it wasn't all organic. I mean, some players felt as if some of the NBA crowd noise was artificial. Hmm. The 76ers making a switch here. Grant's checked in. Some heavy accusations about artificial noise being pumped in last year. We've seen the issue in the NFL. Talked about now in the NBA. Seeing it in other sports, there's a case that maybe the NBA has got to deal with this. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I know some stadiums, it might feel like there is extra noise being pumped in. And listen, there are a lot of fan bases that we have are just flat out loud. I mean, it can be electric. But having said that, I don't think we want to have the artificial noise being pumped in. I think it does the game a disservice. Thompson right side. He dishes it to Grant. Here's Noel and a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. At the line for your 76ers. And he can't get the first one. Jakar Samson's checked in for Thompson. So he comes up empty, missing both. It's still pretty early to, to judge, but so far the 2014 draft class has lived up to the hype. The, the top guys were as good as promised and a lot of talent down later in the draft as well. Philadelphia has gone over three so far in the fourth quarter from long range. It's deflected and stolen by Russell. From deep, and that one's good. Russell's got 10 points here in the second half. They're relying on their three-point shooting and getting pretty good results right now. You're right, three of their last five makes are from beyond the arc. With the 2014 draft class, Clark, it was so hyped up, a lot of teams probably didn't care that they were losing some games at the end of the year as they themselves were testing some younger players on their roster. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. You look at the guys from that class, many of them have star potential. And one thing about the NBA, there are a ton of siblings currently playing in the league, some on the same team, some on opposing sides, but there must be over a half a dozen sets of siblings. And he finishes nicely on the layup. 
Russell's got seven now in this quarter. This is a fantastic performance in this half. He didn't play as well in the first, but you know, you just know with this guy, he's always ready to turn it around. And so here is Philadelphia. Passes to Noel. And the rejection by Embiid. And it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Noel. Sacramento's gone three of four from downtown here in the fourth. As you said, Greg, there are a ton of sibling pairs in the NBA, even more, Clark, if you include the D-League. Well, you start with the Plumleys, the Gasols, the Teague, Zellers. For twins, you have the Lopez twins, Morris twins, the Zellers, Gasols, Teagues, Steph, and Seth Curry. Count two with wow. the D-League. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Here's Tauskas. Now the dish to Grant. Some nice ball movement here by the 76ers. Out to the wing. Screened by Grant. Here's Noel. Another miss by Philadelphia. And this is why you need good defenders on the interior to contest shots. Yeah, Greg, making every shot a hard one, even the shots in close. The offensive rebound. Randall kicks to Russell. And another shot. And Embiid, the bucket on the assist by Russell. Russell's got assist number eight now on the night. The 76ers shooting a pretty low 34% thus far. He's guarded by Russell, and he gets it to go. Now there's something for the top 10 highlight reel right there. A layup can be just as sweet and as pretty as a dunk sometimes. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Grant's got his sixth rebound on the night. The feed to Noel. Embiid comes with a double team. Two minutes, two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Grant gets a wide open look. Sacramento grabs the miss. I didn't see that miss coming. I mean, he's usually been money from that range. Outside, Russell. Inside, Embiid. Fellas, that two-hand monster slam was vicious. <laughs> I don't think there was anyone, and I mean anyone, that could have stopped him on that one. I tell you what, I'm glad they didn't try, because somebody might have got their feelings hurt. Stauskas, the pass to Noel, and the rejection by Embiid. One twenty-nine left in the fourth quarter. Philadelphia's gone 0-3 so far in the fourth quarter from long range. Yes, and, and with this one winding down, it's obvious to everyone who watched it, just a total mismatch and a true show of strength for the Kings. And this was one that never really was in doubt, I thought, Stephen Clark, uh, an all-around dominant performance. Clark, and you kind of thought that maybe even going into the game. I certainly did, and they just cracked it open and made it an NC, no contest. Yeah, I like that. And these guys already with 45 wins on the year. So tonight we'll make it 46. Really, they had their number this season. Two wins, a home win, and an away win. Yeah, you know, I thought the result might be a little different this time around, but clearly I was mistaken. And now they'll have to wait till next year for a shot at revenge. And while it's a team game, you can't win without guys showing up. And that was the case tonight for Embiid. You can set a tone with defense, and that's exactly what he did with how he protected the rim. It just seems like the more he touches it, the more the lead grows. 43 seconds left in the fourth quarter. There's the pick. The pass to Sampson. Down to five on the shot clock. From 11 feet away, and Embiid with the block, and that one's good. 27 seconds left in the game. Here's Russell, picked by Randall. Russell kicks to Embiid. Back to Russell. Embiid against Noel. The turnaround, Jay, and again at Sacramento converting. Didn't take their time in wrapping this game up. They came out with a sense of urgency. Nice ending spurt to polish it off. Once they had them on the ropes, they started throwing haymakers at them. 